Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Uh, we are from Fizit uh, 3304, uh, principal of measurement system. Uh, we are from group 5. And today we are going to uh, discuss about uh, sensing element that have this and uh, before that, uh, we will introduce ourselves first. Start with me. My name is Muhammad Fidaus Ben Jamel. My magic number is 202264. Continue. Hi, my name is Nurina Nur Azman. My magic number is 202534. My name is Nurina Binti Abdullah and my magic number is 202921. Uh, my name is Ismail Zay bin Muhammad Zamri. My metric number is 200600. Hi, my name is Aisha binti Hassanuddin. My metric number is 202990. And the last one is uh, Nur Hazira, uh, which is 203186. We have done uh, introduce ourselves and we will start uh, first with activity one, which we uh, we have given uh, nine element sens sensor that we have to choose, and we have choose uh, capacity sensor uh, and thermo uh, electric uh, for activity one, which number one. Uh, I mean number two. Uh, we have to uh, discuss about what is the uh, characteristic of the sensing element. Uh, and what, what is the principle of the select sensing element, uh, different type available, and how does the sensing element operate in the car? Uh, so we have given 10 minutes, so uh, let's begin. I will uh, continue to characteristic of uh, capacity sensing element. Uh, first, cap uh, first is uh, capacitive sensing. Sensing is a non-contact measurement technique since the system does not does not contact with the part where there are no parts distortion, witness mark or probe wear. As there are no sens sensor cycle time, high volume measurements are posi possible. And the second one is the capacity sensor has a very high resolution match only be the laser interferometer. Typical resol resolution range from 0 0.1 Nm to 15 Nm. Operating range are normally less than 3 mm. And the last one is a uh, capacitive sensor measure rapidly they are suited to high volume sorting application and high bandwidth measurement application. So, uh, the principle of a sensing element, a capaci capacitive sensor act like a simple capacitor, a metal plate in a sensing phase of the sensor is electrically connected to an internal oscillator circuit. circuit Circuit and the target to be sensed at as the second plate of the capacitor, unlike an inductive sensor that produces an electromagnetic field, a capacitive sensor produces an electromagnetic field. Next, the external capacitance between the target and the external sensor plate are a part of the feedback capacitance in the oscillator circuit. As the target approach the sensor phase of the oscillation increase until they are reach the threshold level and active, activate the, out, the output. Um, wait, uh, Ira, just, okay, I will. The capacity sensor have the ability to adjust, to adjust the sensitivity or the threshold level or the of the oscillator. The sensitivity adjustment can be made by adjusting a poten poten potential meter using an integral teach push button or remotely by using a teach wire. If the sensor does not have an adjustment method, then the sensor must physically be moved 
for the sensing to the target correctly. Um, okay, next. Okay, there are two categories of target that capacitors, capacitive sensor can detect, can detect the first being conductive and second is non-conductive. Conductive target include metal, water, blood, uh, acid, bases and salt water. These target are, uh, this target have a greater capacitance and a target a dielectric string is immaterial. Unlike an inductive promisely sensor, the reduction fa factor for the various method are not a factor in the sense, sensor sensing distance. Um, for the non-conductive target categories at like an insulator to the sensor electrode, a target dielectric constant also sometimes referred to as dielectric constant is the measure of the insulation properties used to determine the reduction factor of the sensing distance. Therefore, material with high water content, for example, wood, rain, dirt and paper with uh, affect the sensing distance. Let me proceed to the C and D question. So the question C is different type available for the capacitive sensor which is there are two basic types of capacitive sensing system. The first type is the flush or shielded or embedded version. However, with capacitive sensor, they are sometimes referred to as object detection sensor. The second type is the non-flush or non-shielded version. However, again, with capacitive sensor, they are sometimes referred to as level detection, sen detection sensor. Okay, so shielded or flush capacitive sensor are perfect for detecting solid or liquid through non-metallic container walls up to 4 mm thick. And the second one, the non-flush or level detection capacitive sensor are not shielded and apply a spherical electrostatic field this field is emitted from the front face of the sensor and wraps around to the side of the sensor head. So the question D is how does the sensing elements operate? A capacitive sensor convert a change in position or properties of the dielectric material into an electrical signal. Capacitive sensor works by detecting any change in the electric field the sensor can register at the touch or proximity, displacement as well as the level detection of humidity and fluid. So a capacitive sensor is composed of a pair of ejection electrodes. When a human being or any other conductive object comes in proximity to this electrode, there is additional capacitance between the electrode and the object which can be measured to detect the object present. Capacitive touch sensing has been increasingly used to replace mechanical button with touch sensitive button. This is uh, the example in the automobiles. So that's it for me. We, uh, we will uh, continue uh, to the uh, another question, uh, which is. Uh, in uh, in number three, uh, question number question number one is pick an area you find most suitable for the select sensing element to the apply in the car. Uh, B. What purpose uh, does the sensing element have in the select selected area? Uh, how will the sensing element work in the selected area? Uh, explain how does the sensing element work for the purpose and C is where else can you place the selected sensing element and does the sensing element work in the same way as in B so let's let's start um, um thank you for that so I'll be presenting this right now 
So for our activity question three is we choose um thermoelectric sensing thermoelectric sensing element um for another um sensor that can be applied in a car. So as um Fredo stated before, we uh, have already discussed about this question, and then the question A, Inshira will take over. For question A. Pick an area you find most suitable for the selected sensing elements to be applied in a car. Next slide. So, um, for for this question, we have chosen um, thermoelectric uh, thermoelectric sensor, uh, which is the direct conversion of a temperature differential to an electric voltage that can be explained by um, thermoelectric sensors. So thermoelectric sensor is those that have, those that are passive sensor, passive sensors such as um, sensors that use heat, thermal, uh, and so on. And one of those uh, sensing elements that uses thermoelectric effect is thermocouple. So thermocouple is used to measure temperature because it's a passive sensor. And um, the place that is most suitable to use thermocouple is to measure exhaust gas reading by using um, it as temperature sensor for the exhaust gas. I will, um, next, Isma will explain for B. Okay, uh, thank you, Inshira. So now we will proceed to question B. So basically the question B asks just the purpose of EGT and the working principle of EGT. So now, uh, next slide. Okay, so what is EGT? So EGT is basically just exhaust gas temperature sensor. So it's, it is a monitor meter that measure exhaust gas temperature of an internal combustion engine. So in conjunction with a thermal couple type parameter. So by monetary this, uh, driver can get the idea of vehicle air fuel ratio. So when this air fuel ratio is high enough, above 19 degrees something like, and more than that, uh, it can be an indicator of dangerous condition that can lead to engine failure. So next slide. So this is the purpose of uh, EGT, which is to measure the temperature of emitted gas from an uh, internal combustion engine. So this measurement is based on the interaction of factor of combustion, such as timeline, ignition, fuel, compression, and oxygen. So the minute variety changes in this factor uh, lead to the significant variation in the measurements. So uh, EGT is necessary for any uh, driver since it will help the driver to, to improve engine efficiency, reduce pollutant, extend engine life, and protect component that are sensitive to thermal overloads. Okay, next. Okay, so in order to EDT um, working in combustion part, so there are a few uh, design that speci already specified for this EDT. First is it must be high sensitivity and uh, high resistance to temperature since it's working under 800 Celsius and more than that. And next is the thermocouple is a circuit consisting of two junction, uh, hot junction and cold junction that jointed with two sim dis similar metals. So these two dissimilar metals may be uh, type K, which is chromal element or type J, iron constantin. But type J is usually used in uh, lower performance engines. And the thermocouple cable that connected between the combustion engine and the, uh, meet, the meter, the EGT, uh, it must be insulated with a cable that because it must to be robust enough to survive a high vibration element. And, and it can be easily to be bent to suit the required route around the engines. And next, the EGT must be small enough uh, to respond quickly and not disrupt gas flow. And the last one is the exhaust thermocouple need a gas seal and sheet uh, to protect it from corrosive combustion product. Okay. Uh, okay, the last one is the working principle. So 
the EGT is working under thermal couple, uh, working principle which is based on C back effect. So when the closed circuit is formed by jointing two dissimilar meter, metals at two junction at the chromal element or constant uh, uh, and with element and junction are maintained at different temperature then electromagnetic force is induced in the closed circuit. So the amount of EMF induced is different for different metal combination and is proportional to the temperature difference of the conjunction. Next. So generally, uh, the reference junction, which is the cold junction, must be kept at zero Celsius and the hot junction, which means the measuring junction, is kept at a low temperature. So an EMF in millimeter volt will be generated in the circuit due to the temperature difference of this junction. And this EMF will be measured by the PMMCC instrument that connected in the circuit. So when both junctions are at the same temperature, MF uh, will not generate a uh, current and no deflection meter. Where, but when, more, when both junctions are at different temperature, current will flow through the meter and there will be deflection at meter. Next. So the MF generated is proportional, let's say before, to temperature difference. So the amount current flow will also uh, proportional to the temperature difference. Therefore, the meter can be calibrated directly in terms of temperature. Uh, thus, uh, for a correct temperature measurement, the reference junction temperature must remain constant or suitable composition provided if it should change. So basically, uh, the cold junction must remain kept at zero Celsius and if the if it does need to change, then we must uh, introduce a new compensated element into that. And the last one is to reduce inaccuracy. Uh, nowadays, thermocouple are installed with instruments that provi provide it with automatic reference composition. So uh, for the last question is question C. Um, where else can you place the selected sensing element? And does the sensing element work in the same way as in B? So another application of thermoelectric sensor that can be used in a car is to measure engine temperature by using engine coolant temperature sensor or known as ETC. ETC does not work the same way as in B. Uh, as I said, um, since it does not work the same way as in B, so I'll be explaining in further detail what is ETC. A coolant temperature sensor, CTS, also known as also known as an ECT sensor or ECTS, engine coolant temperature sensor, is used to measure the temperature of the coolant or antifreeze mix in the cooling system, giving an indication of how much heat the engine is giving off. The sensor works with the vehicle's ECU, continually uh, monitoring the coolant temperature to make sure the engine is burning at the optimum temperature. To get an accurate reading of the current engine temperature, the ECU sends a regulated voltage to the CTS. The resistance of the sensor varies with temperature. This, this is how the ECU can monitor temperature changes. The ECU uses this reading to, to calculate the coolant temperature and from there adjust the fuel injection, fuel mix and ignition timing and controls when the electric cooling fan is switched on and off. This information is also used to send an accurate reading of the engine temperature to a gauge on the dashboard. So um, these are the sum, these are the sign or since uh, these are the sign or symptoms that might indicate a CTS issue. Um, irregular reading of the dashboard. Um, usually um, the the temperature should be around 88 to 90 degrees while, uh, while the engine is on up. Um, the second one is overheating. Um, um, you can see whether your engine is hot or not um, by uh, when it is highlighted um, by the dashboard gauge. Dashboard gauge, gauge. Mm. And then the next one is check engine light alert on dashboard. Um, the fourth one is rough engine sound by idling. Idling means when um, the car is out of gear. Um, the next one is limited performance. Um, uh, usually it is called it is caused by ECU miscalculating full rich mixture. Full rich full rich mixture is an excessive um uh, what is it uh excessive um proportion of fuel. 
which means it has more gasoline and less oxygen in the in the what the thing is called ah uh, i forgot ah uh, in a cts sorry and then the last one is poor full economy uh, full economy is um refers to the uh, refer to number of miles a car can travel using a specific amount of fuel um so can you see my ear? Oh, so this is where your coolant temperature sensor located in the car. So you can open it in your boot engine and you can search for it on your own. And this is how it actually looks like. So, arigatou. Cool, Noreen. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that is it.